We are on a roll. We are on a roll. I love it when we have days like this in the bush. It is very cool. So we're back with the pride of lions that we had yesterday. Now you have to excuse me because I'm going to open up my mobile device. The little signal that I managed to get yesterday, I managed to just take a screenshot of the name that, well, people have given this pride. Olo missing Ioi. Olo missing Ioi is apparently the name of this pride. And it's the, the pride that, of course, boxer nose and earless sort of tend to. Now, I just find it's interesting, of course, that this is another name because when I asked all the locals, they all gave me the name Balloon Pride. And anyway, so I mean, these guys work here and, and are constantly interacting with these cats. But anyways, that's another name of the pride. I don't really know and I don't really mind whether I know the, the names of the prides or not. I'm just happy that we've got some cats to show you. But unfortunately, they were not successful last night. So they actually fooled us a little bit from where we left them. Uh, they turned around and ended up going back west again, back onto the luggers. So maybe they made an attempt and were unsuccessful and then just came back down to, well, sort of lick their, lick their wounds and feel sorry for themselves that they weren't able to catch anything. I know that those cubs are going to be very, very hungry and very irritated today by the fact that the adults didn't catch anything. But they are all around here. They're just obviously scattered about. We can just see a few of them. I'm slowly starting to see more and more lions. They're going to keep themselves busy by chewing on some sticks, which is also very nice. They love to chew on sticks, young lions. I'm sure it feels very nice, especially when they're teething. They'll chew anything, really. If you drop a cap and a sighting, a hat, they'll take that and chew that too. Now, a question from Joy this morning, wondering what can lionesses do to best protect their cubs? Well, Joy, the best thing that they can do, and particularly when they're really, really young, is, is hide them away. Keep them out of sight. So out of sight, out of mind, that's, that's the best thing. Uh, of course, they are armed with very sharp claws and very sharp teeth, and they have a voice on them. So if somebody does come around, like, say, for instance, a hyena or a leopard, uh, they'll growl this now, they'll probably try and chase it off, and if not, try and kill another predator. However, if it's a big male lion, and it's a new male lion, uh, or a new group that have just come in, and they have not sired those cubs, that's a different story. She's going to have to choose. Does she fend, defend her cubs to the death? Does she literally risk her own life? Because they will kill her if they are, or if she is reluctant to give them up and, and reluctant to mate with them. Or does she just literally drop her head and she'll try her best, she'll growl and she'll snarl, but eventually she's going to go, I know what's going to happen, and it has to happen, and the males will kill the cubs. So it, I think it just depends on the situation. If it's, um, other, if it's another big male lion or if it's lionesses or whatever it may be, but she will try and defend them and she'll be savage. Um, and now if we, for instance, we often say, what would happen if I got out the car now? You might find that these lions would run away. They're not on a kill. Uh, they've got plenty of space to move. If I'd got out of the car in the sighting that we had earlier this morning, I would have been attacked. That mother would have tried to have defended her cubs from me, and I would have lost that battle. Not that I would do something silly like that. Um, but she would be more protective over them because they can't move around as well. Whereas these youngsters, they would get up and they can run quite happily. You know, they're quite confident on their feet. So again, it, it just depends. There's so many different scenarios, uh, and and every scenario has got a, a different reaction. But they're, they're a little bit active. I can't imagine that they would go out and try and catch something. Now, the prey is starting to develop around them. You can't see it, though, but it's behind the car. There's some airland, there was some zebra, wildebeest but far away. Now, Aya, you're wondering if I've ever had an encounter with lions that have made me f feel unsafe. Yes, on foot. Obviously, in South Africa, we, we do trails walks. I've been charged by lions a few times. It's, it's, an, it's intimidating. The sound that is made, or, or to experience a lion growling at you on foot is terrifying. It, it, it really does send shivers down your spine. And then I had a really uncomfortable situation in a car. Uh, I've told you about those young boys that were quite naughty and would often stand up on their back legs and want to look inside the vehicle, but we put in, we, we curbed that behavior very quickly. Uh, then the other thing was uh, the one day, and I don't know if I've told you this, I've told a couple of people this story before, is I had this lovely couple 
coolest little kid I've ever seen in my life and just refused to listen. And I think that they, I don't think they quite realized how dangerous wild animals can be. I think they were under the assumption that these were all tame and it was a joke and, it, you know, um, we, we fed them. Anyways, and this kid kept bouncing around in the car, and I said to them, listen, if, if this doesn't stop, we're not going to be able to go and view lions and things like that because I don't feel safe. Anyway, they threw their toys out of the cot a little bit, so I said, okay, right, we're going to go view the lions, but I kept my distance. I made sure that I kept my distance at all times, especially, I always do when I've got young kids in the car when I was still guiding. So, this little kid was wearing an interesting little onesie outfit of it was like basically I think it was a monkey or a bear but it had rounded ears on it and this little kid as I was in the sighting uh, decided to bounce around on the seats and we were sitting with a beautiful big male lion I've showed you a picture of him before his name was Mondoro it was down on the Eastern Cape and he all of a sudden fast asleep and he was looking around and he sort of did that thousand mile stare he was looking at my car but it looked like he was looking straight through us he wasn't. He'd eyed that kid out. Obviously, the kid, as it was bouncing around in the car, he picked up that small figure. And also, like young children do, they're quite chatty and they make very high-pitched whining noises. Not intentionally. They can't help it. It's just the frequency at which their voices are at. This was very, very interesting to this male lion. Anyways, he got up and he started running towards a car. I've never had a lion run like that towards my car, where I basically grabbed the kid, pulled it down, put the car in reverse, and drove out of that sighting. Those guests never went on another safari after that. I think they realized how silly and um, sort of naive they were around these animals, and I'd warned them, I don't know how many times, I think also just said that the child was not allowed to come on safari anymore because it couldn't behave and it was dangerous and we'd have to get a babysitter. They were on their last day though, they just decided to give it a skip. I think they were petrified. They went from being lovely and tanned in the African sun to white, the colour of milk. They were so petrified and they realised that that lion was coming for their kid. So, you, you really, really have to listen to your guide when you go on safari. They know best, they're doing everything they can for the, obviously for the well-being of the animals, most importantly, and then of course, they wanna keep you nice and safe in the cars too. So, so every time, if you have gone on a safari, or if you do go on a safari, you, I promise you, if your guide says something to you, it's not because they're trying to act um, sort of superior and in charge and want to have this power about them they really are just doing it for your safety so it's important and don't bounce around in the car sit quietly I mean you can talk normally you can sneeze you can laugh that's uh, obviously depending on the situation of course um, but your, your guides will give you guidelines and they really really do mean it so, so yes I have had a few very very uncomfortable encounters Ah, but our lines are not doing too much today. Now, Manu and I are actually on our way back towards the triangle. So what we need to do is head towards the Purungat Bridge. And the reason why I want to get down there is I want to see if I can find my favorite pride of lions. There's three lionesses with the four uh, sub-adults and maybe Notch 2 will be around. It would be nice to see him again. So we're going to start heading in that direction. It's quite far away. And while we meander along the Mara River, I'm going to send you back across to Tristan, who's not having luck with the cats, but he is having a great day tracking.